Hello everybody, my name is Spencer, and today we're going to be going through another episode of how to make a map. So in the last episode, we learned how to actually set up the files, and in this episode, we're going to actually start getting working on a map. So, we're just going to kind of learn the actual basics around the world editor itself, and to get ourselves set up with a terrain, and then we'll go from there. So, let's get started. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to press F11. F11 opens the world editor. This is where you're going to see a lot. And... These are the main things you're going to see. So you're going to see the asset browser. You're going to see material editor. You're going to see scene tree and inspector. Um, I just kind of lied to you because you won't see. Uh, I mean, you might see the asset browser, but you probably won't see the material, material editor. So what you're going to want to do is go to window up here in this little corner right here. And you're going to want to open the asset browser. And uh, if that's not already open, you can have that one open. Inspector. Inspector is these this one right here in the scene tree. Um, along with the well the scene tree so make sure the scene tree is right here and make sure the inspector so you can kind of drag things around uh, so just make sure this is underneath that and the scene tree is over this this is sort of just how i work and it's gonna be helpful if you have the same sort of setup because then you can just follow along pretty easily um you can you can i mean if you want you can set up however way you want but this is the setup i'm using so it may just help you if, if you have the same one uh so if i go to window you're gonna want to also open the uh, well, asset browser is already open, and then the material editor, uh, where is that? Right here. It's actually right under uh, inspector, or um, yeah, inspector. So you just want to open that, and then you're going to put the material editor under here. So this is sort of what, what I'm going to be working with. Uh, actually, normally I have the material editor over here, but you can't see it because I have two screens, so you cannot, you can literally not see it at all. So, yeah. Anywho, so let's actually get started with the actual terrain because we don't have anything. So if I were to just, you know, press J to unpause physics, we would just fall for an eternity. So we do not want that. Let me just reset the card. So we're back up to normal. So if we go to this little button right here where it says terrain tools with a little wrench upon it or over, over it, uh, if we go to import terrain, which is this little button next to that once you click on it, and then you'll be greeted with this little thing. So this is an import terrain. This is for like height maps and stuff. I actually kind of made a, a like an own height map for it which means we don't have to worry about actually importing a high map. I mean, we are importing a high map, but we, I made one for us, which is just like a flat terrain. Uh, so you don't have to really worry about that. In the future, I may do an episode on how to actually import your own uh, custom terrain height maps. So, you know, I it, look, for, look forward to that in the future. But for right now, we're just going to do that. So we're going to actually rename this to uh, test terrain because this is a test terrain. You can pretty much name this to whatever you want, but I like to always just test terrain um, or whatever the map name is, terrain because it helps me with organization. So as for the meters per pixel, you can leave this at 1.0. As for the max height, I'm gonna set this to about 1500. This just determines how high it can actually go. Um, I don't know if these are in meters or not. I think they might be, I'm not totally sure. But yeah, I normally just set this to like 1500 or whatever makes sense. And then as for the height map image, you're gonna wanna press these little dots right here. And then in the actual uh, test map or your directory, you will have a blank height map and you just want to double click that and then press import and and then you have a blank height map so there we go if you press this little button right here in this uh, scene tree which sort of just shows you all the objects that are in here so you have your player you have a sound effect space that i have which is just a reverb sound that i think sounds cool you can delete it if you want but i don't know it just kind of gives like a very spacious vibe to everything um then you have a little your spawn tree so this is sort of just you know your, your spawn so you can kind of move it and then wherever that wherever you put it you will spawn um, but yeah, let's click on the terrain and you'll see this little thing right here, which is a little like axis mover um, So this little plain thing will move it on two axes and then this will move it on one And then this little button in the middle will move it on on all three I never use this one because it's not really that reliable at all because it kind of just moves it wherever it wants So I never really use that one at all So let me bring it down to the actual car so we can actually, you know, drive on it so if I just move this down a little bit you can kind of see where the car is and then just get it in the normal area. And then if you want, you can kind of just adjust it like that. And if it's a little bit above it, you can kind of just select the car and then select the spawn sphere and just move it down a bit just so, you know, you're not floating in the air. So there we go. We actually got a terrain in. And as you can see, it doesn't have material right now. And that's because there is no material for the terrain right now. So if we go to the actual terrain tool, we can go to terrain painter. And terrain painter is where all the magic happens. So if we go to add terrain material on the corner right here, I already have some presets that I've added. Um, these are mainly from, uh, I think, grid map. And then I made some of my own, like grid two. So I'm going to add a grid two. And I'm just going to remove warning material because it's sort of just a blank. Thing with no material so we will delete that and then now we have grid two and now we actually have a terrain texture and if we go up close we actually have a grid texture which is very nice especially for a test map which we are working on so i will press Control s to save and then you can go to file file save too if you want but Control s tends to be a little bit easier 
So you may ask yourself, Spencer, can we add more than one? Yeah, we can. We can always add more than one. So if we go to, you know, grass, then we have grass. I'm going to actually change the brush shape because right now I have it set to a square and it is really big. And if you want to adjust the size of your brush, you can just use scroll wheel or use this little slider up here. Um, either one works, but I'm going to probably just gonna use scroll wheel because it's easier. So yeah, so as you can see, it's set to a square right now and we do not probably want a square. So I'm going to set it to a circle because circle is just tends to be a little bit more better. But if you're doing like sort of corner sections, a square might be better because you can kind of make like those 90 degree angles. All right, so let me go back to circle brush and now we can kind of just brush things in and it's very helpful. Um, and if we zoom out, you can kind of see it has a little bit of, of a low resness to it. And how to fix that actually is if you go to the terrain and then you go down to the inspector down here, which has all your information about the actual thing you're selected on. If you go down to what it, where, where, where is it? Uh, the thing that says base texture size, you put in 496, which is the maximum. Now you have a little more high res and it looks a lot better. So if we go back to the terrain tools, now we can actually just play around with our little terrain thing or the terrain painter. And this can kind of just paint whatever terrain you have on it. And uh, I can always add another one like uh, beach sand. And now we have more like that. And that's sort of how you get your ter get your terrain painting in. It's pretty easy, you can add asphalt. Um, you can always make your own, but I will I will get into that in future episodes. But for right now, I'm just sort of teaching the basics, and I feel, feel like this is enough to just get you through your first map. So yeah, so yeah. Let me just undo everything I just did because I'm not actually wanting it in the map. I will actually want to keep the 496 on this stuff because it keeps it nice and crisp. So if I do a control save there, now it will be saved, and now we're good. So let me actually show you some of the features of the actual terrain thing. So as I already went through, we already went through the terrain painter and the circle brush and box brush. So these features right here is I will what I will go through right now. So if we go to raise height, this thing will just kind of raise the height. If you just hold it there, it kind of makes like a bulge and uh, it looks kind of weird. But if I move it around a little bit, then you can kind of, you know, get a little more mountainous shape, a more realistic shape to it. So it kind of has like a very like flatness to it, but it looks good overall. Um, but if you don't like that flatness at all, you can always go to the smooth tool, which is also really helpful. Which just kind of smooths it out, makes it look a little bit better, and uh, always helps with the look of it. As for the lower height, it does the exact same thing as the other one, just lowers it, and uh, as you can see, it still makes it kind of look flat. Again, you can always press smooth, and it always will smooth it out, and it look beautiful. As for smooth slope, this kind of just takes the average of this like the most tops to the closest top section and the closest bottom section and it kind of just makes it like a flat thing on one like it makes it the whole plane that you're selected on flat um or as, at, at like a one slope so say i have this selected it will make this whole area the same slope as the rest as for paint noise this kind of just paints some noise you kind of add quick little mountains like that they don't look the best but they do work especially if you're making like off-road mats or something like that it's always very nice these things always this tool is always very helpful and uh, I find using I find myself using it a lot as for the flatten tool this kind of just flattens it but doesn't really like flatten flatten it because it kind of just it will fall like an average of it so if you go it will like follow up and then it'll fall back down a little bit so I don't tend myself using this too much the one that I use is the set height which is a lot better so if you if you go over here you'll see a terrain height picker and if you select that you can select this and then whoop I do not know what just happened there can I select the height, please? Nope. Okay, you're not letting me. Oh, there we go. I got, I got it. So apparently you can't move. So if you if you click on it and then you move your camera, then you click, it's not gonna it's not gonna work. So make sure you click it and then select where you're gonna put it. Um, but this kind of will, once you set the height, this is the height it's setting. Um, you will be able to paint the same height. And this is what I find this a lot better than just the uh, flatten right here. So I always I always end up just using that. Let me undo all this stuff. As for the clear terrain, this will just kind of delete the terrain. This is for if you're putting like a model under the ground and you need to like go underground. This is sort of for that, like either a cave or something like that. As for restore terrain, does the complete opposite of that and just restores the terrain. Average height is just the old way of doing smooth. Um, I don't really use it that much, but it is helpful if you need it. It's just a different type of smooth and uh, kind of unique as your its own unique properties that I can't really explain. Then these last three things, um, I can't really explain right now, but I will explain in the future. They kind of work with meshes. Um, they will align to mesh in a weird way. You'll, you'll see when we, when we actually learn about them, but they're pretty, I use them a little bit. They're mainly used for like when you're making uh, roads via the mesh road system. So moving away from terrain, let's actually start with this, the, just these little buttons right here. So the create object will allow you to create any object that you can't really find in this asset browser. So this has all your like basic sun, water block, precipitation, particle emitter, point light. That just, just the kind of simple things that you can't find in the asset browser itself. Um, so let's say I want to add a 
point light, you can always add a point light right there. And then if I go to object select and select it, I can make it brighter if I could see it. I don't know if you know if you can see that. I guess a little bit. Let me set that to 100. No, that's its priority brightness. We need brightness, sir. Set to, that to 100. You can definitely see it's there and uh, very, very bright. Very, I think that's the brightest thing I've ever made. So let's just get rid of that because we don't need it. Um, so that, that just kind of get those that has to just like I think four different things So this is in, this is environment stuff. You have level stuff You have beam and G stuff and then you have other classes Which I think you actually create yourself and can add stuff to it I'm not totally sure I've never messed around with that then you have the camera path editor Which I've never messed around with so I'm not gonna really gonna get into that you have a decal editor which is very useful and can allow for different things like uh, Tire marks and stuff like that. But right now I just have like numbers um, So we have two and then if you want to change um, the number, because as you can see, it's kind of stuck to two. If you want to change the number, you go over to here and then you choose what frame of, of it is. So if I minus by one, it's, it's well, technically it's kind of funny. This is actually zero, but it does one. So I don't know. So if we go to one, it does two. If we go to two, it does three. If we go to three, it does four. So it kind of goes in a weird way. But um, yeah, that's how decals work. And you kind of, you can kind of just select it. You can uh, turn it. Um, but yeah, that's kind of how that works. And then if you want to know how I'm actually switching between these uh, three things, one on your keyboard is the actual, is what I've already ta taught you about. Two is the sort of the object turn. I have snap on, so if I turn snap off, you have like a very smooth snap. Or, well, there's no snap to it, so it's very smooth. But if I have this rotate snap on, it's gonna kind of rotate it. And then you can kind of change what the increment is. So if I turn it to five, it's a lot, you can, it's, there's still a snap, but it's a very smooth snap. Uh, if I turn it to 45, it's a very harsh snap and very noticeable. Uh, but if I turn that off, it's very, very smooth. As for if I press number three, this is just your scale. So you can kind of scale things up, scale things down. Um, you can kind of make things. I don't think these will elongate because they're trying to, they're, I think they stay in the same size. But with with meshes, you can kind of dilate them by stretching them and stuff like that. But, uh, but for this, you kind of can't. So, yeah. As for the forest, we don't have a forest right now, so we're not going to worry about that, but I will get into that in future episodes. Mesh rotor, editor, this is sort of what I was just talking about with making the, using the terrain for it to make like uh, different roads and stuff. So let me actually show you that right now. So if I set this to a default like 10 and then a default 1, and then I press Alt on my keyboard, hold it down, and then click, you can kind of have a mesh road. This will just fall wherever your cursor goes, and then you can click. And then how I like to normally use this is if I click on this point and then hold Shift, and then you can click on this little um, plane thing right here and you can kind of move it around. And then if you let go, it's copied. So shift is sort of the copy and then you can kind of move it around from there. And it's pretty simple. It's like a snake a little bit. And if you move it down, you can kind of move it down and then like that. So if I grab this section and move this a little bit down like that, we kind of made a little path. But right now it's kind of embedded in it. And I actually kind of want this to be part of the terrain, not the actual road mesh. So the way to do that is if you go to terrain tools, this is what these things are for. So if I go to align up to mesh and then turn down the softness, just so you don't have to, because softness will kind of make it a little, little bit weird and won't work as well. Uh, so if I just press up, now it's kind of bringing it up to the surface. And then you might be saying to yourself, Spencer, how do you get rid of this little section right here? Well, no worries. If you go to align mesh down, it will delete all the things on top. And that's sort of how you make a roads or just sort of, well, I guess just roads, yeah, in the game, especially on mountain cliffs or something like that. And it's very easy to do. And then if you remove it, you have a little road and it's very nice. And if you want to smooth all the edges off, you can always do that with this. And then now you can have yourself a little road. But as you can see, there's no actual road texture on it. So let me actually do that. So the next thing, I'm going to skip the particle editor because I don't really work with that. River error, I will get into two, but let's go to decal road error. So if I make this maybe five, then I press the same same controls for the mesh as, as the mesh road. Uh, you can kind of just move it like this and then I can follow it along the road. And as you can see, it has no texture, but we will get into that too. I don't think I actually added any road textures of this, so I might have to add that into the thing. But now we have a road and uh, it's very white for some reason. Um, so if I go to this, I can kind of add a path texture. And now we got a road texture and it's, uh, it's, uh, it looks okay. But yeah, that's sort of how you create a row. Let me just move this because we're not gonna actually use that. But yeah, that's sort of the basics. Um, and then I guess for the river editor, it's kind of similar to the mesh road, um, but you can add rivers. And uh, yeah, I know I'm not really gonna worry about this yet, but it's uh, it's kind of fun. You can mess around with it if, if you want. It's there's a lot to get into there. Um, I'll go over that in the future. So yeah, that's sort of the basics of this little section right here. So let's actually get onto the asset browser itself. So if we go over to the asset browser, you have all your little things right here. And if there is a side menu, just press this button and it should go away. I don't know why I can't bring it up again. Um, but there is a section, um, especially I think if you open a new version of it, 
it will be there and uh, you might want to get rid of that just so you have this little section right here but i think i do want to do before we begin on this is you're going to go to filter and then you're going to disable all and you're going to set it to where is it the day where is it see no not see day just day there we go so now whenever you go into it you're going to see the c day or the day because or the d-a-e i just all i always call it day i don't know the, what's actually called but i call it day so day um so yeah, if I just, uh, you know, so filter by day, which is sort of the models that BMG handles. Um, if I have that as that, then we will be all set. So let me go into the art section, shapes, and then miscellaneous. And now you have all the things from grid map. So if I just pull in one thing, let's say, let's say the cube or the curb, we'll do curb. So now we have a curb in here. It's beautiful, look at it. And then we can kind of move it around. We can rotate it. We can do whatever we want with it. And uh, we can do a lot of things with it. So say we want to jump into this little pit right here. So let me actually, undo all that stuff with control z and if i move this like that and i can move it down now i can make a little ramp with it there are actually ramps with this but i'm making this a ramp because i want it to be a ramp so i can kind of do something like that and now if i do control s actually let me turn this a little bit if i do control s to save and then press f11 to get out of that i am embedded embedded in the in the terrain that is lovely uh, if i just move myself and then press f7 to respawn myself over here there we go and now I can just jump myself off into this pit. Um, this is a mini leap of death and I am a map genius. Oh, that that's a weird glitch that happens when you don't, when like you, you create a new terrain and then you make new terrain and then you, you, you haven't logged out of the map and then log back in. I don't know why this happens, but you'll get used to it. it like it does like a weird glitch thing because it doesn't understand that terrain is new. And uh, so if I just reloaded the game right now, it would, this wouldn't happen. So don't worry about it. Um, but in the future, just it, just so you don't worry about that when, when you're making your own map, that, that won't be an issue. Anyway, so yeah, you can kind of make that um, a little jump or whatever you want it to be. Um, but yeah, so this is sort of your area where you can import objects and it's quite fun. So say you wanted this little GM track here, you have a GM track here. Say you wanted a little, another GM track. Why does this not have material? I don't know. Let's actually explain how to do material stuff because that is fun. So if I pull this up just so like that, um, and as you can see, material stuff. Oh, that's weird. You get like a full list. Oh, because there's absolutely no material on this. Okay, that's why when I was clicking on this, there was no material. Let me explain that actually. So if I pull up this pipe here, as you can see, it has a material. So if I click off room and then click back on it, you'll see that it has the grid map material right here. So this is sort of the material that it has. As for this, when I click on this, it has nothing. So it doesn't really know what to find. So it just shows you literally every a list of everything. How to fix that is what you're going to want to do is go to new material this little button right here then you get a little prompt like this and you're going to want to name it whatever you want so i'm going to call it grid to texture and then i'm going to press pick from tts static so or tss static sorry and then you're going to click on the model itself and then you're going to see this little thing right here um whatever the material is for it you're going to click on that and you press create and now you're going to have a brand new material as you can see it is not actually there yet that's because we haven't uh, saved it so if we're going to save it and then you're going to want to change the pbr because pbr is very nice so if i save this and i delete this and then bring it back in like that we don't have it because everything hates us and we probably need to reload the game so yeah but trust me that works and that's how you actually work with materials um i'll, I'll get in more depth how to actually make ter terrain materials or not terrain materials but actual just materials in the future but for right now i'm just gonna just that's how you if you want to add a material to a new thing that's sort of how you do that for at least for things don't, that don't have it so yeah let's actually get started to work on something so let's make a little suspension course let's make like a little suspension area so for test map i'm actually going to reset all this stuff because we don't actually want this here so if i go to where is it the select height and then i select this height this is the height that we want so if i just remove everything like that now everything's flat and normal so we can actually begin um, let's set our car right here so if i do save now everything's saved and all ready to go so for the start of our test map, we're going to want to have a, or for the um, suspension area, we're going to have the suspension thing. Let me pull this down. Sorry, the uh, material is getting a little bit too much room there. So if we go down to this little suspension thing, you have a little suspension thing. So if I bring this down into the, into the ground a little bit, and then I turn on the snap just so I can get like that perfect rotation on it instead of worrying about the angle of it. So I put that down like that. I can move this across a little bit just so you have a little more room and now we have our little first suspension area and that's always very lovely but hey there's no guardrails or anything to protect you from coming off of it so what we can add 
is a little curb. Curb curbs are basically actually I'm gonna do curb three. Curbs are basically just like blocks that I can work with or that you can work with. They're pretty easy to work with. Um, you can kind of just move them around and uh, they're very helpful. I found them very helpful, especially for creating text maps and stuff like that. So I can kind of just move it around like this. Um, also, if you want to change your camera speed, you can hold down Alt and then use the scroll wheel and that little button up there, or not button, but like a yellow thing right there is showing your camera speed. So if I turn it on to like seven, it's very slow. If I turn it up to a hundred, it's really, really fast. And uh, I normally set for like, I don't know, 50 or something like that. I'm actually gonna turn it on a little bit more. Nope, I didn't want, why did my cross run up there? I do not know what button I just pressed, but apparently my car is up there now. So lovely. Anywho, let's actually just copy this across. So if you pull down shift, you can you can copy and then you can continue it like this. And then I can kind of just bring this around here. And there we go. So now we got our first little area. So if I uh, hold down shift to select all of these and then I move it across like this with shift to copy. And then I can move it across like that. Now we have a little area right here. Perfect. So if I press F11 and then F7 to wherever your camera spawn. Um, there's a little new glitch that happens, which is kind of weird. So if you go, whoa, that was loud. That scared me a lot. Um, <laughs> so if I go back into the world here, um, say, say I come out of the world area and press F11. As you can see, it brings you back to your vehicle. But if you press F7, it will bring you back to wherever you were in the world, world editor. Just a little tip um, that I found out. And now I crashed. Lovely. So if I press insert to reset our car, now we can actually use this little suspension area. Um, very basic, but it works and you can't fall out. Um, I must have flipped over there. Lovely. Let's actually add more to this. So if I make, um, or not make, but if I press F11, I can do this, select all these sections. That's our spawns right there. I don't know if that's smart, but whatever. So if I bring this over, now we have, now we can make a little, another area for it. So let me add some new suspension things. So what, what, what's, what are the other ones that were, that were there? Um, these are not really that new. These are quite different. So if I turn these over a little bit, bring these over like that and then I put these in like that bring these in like that and I can put these down a little bit or I guess I can leave it like that it works and then I can bring these over to make them even beautiful look at that look at that look at that genius right there and now I can actually move this in to make sure make sure it actually fits into there and now we got another suspension thing let's test that out so now we're actually you know working oh for some reason that's got stuck one way to fix this, hopefully, I don't know if this will actually fix it, but if you select all these and then set this to a visual visible mesh via the uh, inspector, so the, the little collision uh, menu, if this is closed, always make sure it's open. Uh, so if you go to collision mesh and then you can set it to vis visible mesh, this just kind of alleviates that issue sometimes. I don't know if this will for this this time, but we will see right now. So let's, let's see if our car can make through it. And yes, it can. See, now we're not having that issues because collision meshes for some reason can kind of mess the car up. Um, so I rarely use them unless I want to or need to. So yeah, I'm gonna kind of do a little bit of a time lapse just to show me creating some new suspension things that I'm gonna make and uh, with different objects and stuff like that. But yeah, actually, you know what? Before we do that, I'm gonna show you how to make a custom one and then I'll do a time lapse because I kind of want to do that. I'll make like, I don't know, like seven or something. Uh, so if I go to, let's, let's, let's make a, uh, Let's make a container one. I've done this in a previous map before, actually. So if we go to the container, I bring this down up a tad bit like that. Now we can create a container suspension thing. So if I move this around like that, now we have a container. So if I lift this a little bit, it will count as a suspension course. So if I just move this around like that, copy this, uh, like that. Beautiful, look at that. And then I'll copy this over one last time. I guess one more time too, actually. It's gonna be kind of uneven, but whatever, that's fine. All right, and then I'll move this to make sure it's actually fitting like that. And now we have a container thing. So I'm gonna go ahead and make some other custom ones and I will meet you back when I'm done. All right, so I'm back. I actually did not do as many as I, thought, as I said I was gonna do. I said I was gonna do seven, but I kind of want to show a little bit of the creation of it. So I only got three more done. So I'm gonna do control save to save that, and then I'll press F11, and I actually want to test these out just to make sure they work and that they all are good. So let's test our first one that we made, which is the container one, which I was there with you for. So yes, it does work. It very much does work, and it is beautiful. My tire fell off. Oh, don't worry, that was my spare tire, it's fine. All right, let's go through this. 
which is sort of like a, uh, I don't even know, like a stone thing, I guess. Kind of cool. Works, works, very much works. You're actually not supposed to come at that one with an angle, so I'm just going to do this one first. And beautiful. Look at that suspension go. Oh, that's, that is actually beautiful. Image is amazing. All right, let's try this one. This one might be actually kind of hard on the car, just because you're going to be going up and down. Oh, oh, man. Oh, that's nasty. Oh, oh. Oh, this one's really painful. Love it. Love to see it. Yep. Uh-huh. Oh, our tail came off. Lovely. Lovely. Uh, so, yeah, that's that. So, yeah, I think that's going to do it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed, and I hope you learned a lot. Obviously, um, these videos are not going to be too long. I don't, this, one be a little, this one's definitely going to be a little bit longer than the other one. I'm excited to see where the series goes, and I'm excited to continue it, and hopefully teach more about BMG map making. If you have any questions, just let me know. Shoot them down in the comments below, and uh, I'll catch you in the next one. Bye, guys.